Strangely, the grip of the golf club is like the, the black sheep of the family compared to the exotic shafts and the exotic heads and weights and everything we get in a golf club. The grip is just, oh, that's just that bit at the end, isn't it? Just that black rubber thing at the end. But bizarrely, that's the bit we hold. That's the only bit of the golf club we actually get to feel. So I could have $500 of perfect golf club here and hold a $2 grip and the whole thing would feel rubbish. It would be like a Ferrari with a horrible steering wheel or a bad seat. You know, I, I don't get a good feeling from the car because the bits I'm actually in contact with aren't very good. Now, years ago, grips was just grips. It was just a piece of black rubber on the end. But if you consider now that golf manufacturers and golfers themselves are aware that this is a really important piece of tech. So actually, when you look at a, a modern grip, there's quite a lot of decisions to be made about what you want this to be like. And it can be quite personal, individual. It could also be tailored to your swing and particularly your bad shots. So let's consider that this looks like a grip to you. But if I said this was a Golf Pride, um, it was an Align, it was a dual density, it was a fiber in the top hand, it's a plus four, it's a mid-size and it's paralleled. There's a lot of information there and that all describes exactly what this grip is. So my grips, because I've got slightly larger hands, I have a mid-size which is a size thicker than a standard grip. I also have the Align which is the red line down the back which is a slightly raised sort of rib section so I hold it and I can feel that raised section in my fingers, helps me line the club up a little bit better. The uh, plus four that's on the top of the grip here, plus four means the bottom section has effectively got four layers of tape. So olden days we used to measure things in thickness of layers of tape. And if I'd put four layers of tape on the bottom hand here, it parallels that grip. So rather than it going down and tapering down like a standard grip, it's thicker down the bottom section. The dual density means there's two different types of rubber used on the top hand and the bottom hand. The bottom hand feels a little bit softer, a little bit more tactile, because I get a bit more feel through my bottom hand. My top hand's got some cord running through it. The cord is brilliant for really absorbing sweat or moisture if it's raining to make sure I get a really good strong feeling because as golfers might be aware, the left hand does a bit more of the holding on because that's where we would wear our glove. So we have a really good hold with that hand. We have some feel with the bottom hand. We had the line down the back to help me line up. I might have a line down the top that I help line up as well. Uh, all these different considerations go into the grip. And I think the one thing that most golfers need to assess first with all of this is the grip thickness, and that's related to hand size and also grip position. So if you pick up a golf club and it's very skinny, it's probably gonna feel like you don't have the ability to control that. It's just gonna feel a bit fly away, almost that you have to grip hold of it really, really tightly, otherwise you're gonna let go of it. And lots of golfers don't consider that actually a thicker grip is going to benefit them. So try a mid-size grip and then we go one more to a jumbo size grip and then we can lay a tape underneath those to pack them out as well. If you're playing golf and you have a, a predominant miss, let's say your miss is always left, 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 we'd often describe that that's created by too fast a hand action so your hands roll too quickly. So I would suggest thickening the grip up might actually slow that hand action down. Likewise, if your grip or your swing is always right, 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 your predominant miss is right, and your grip is too thick, you won't be able to roll those hands over quite as well. So grip thickness is fundamentally important. Also consider that if you have an injury, if you have a, a tennis elbow or an arthritis, a thin grip's not gonna help because you're gonna be too tight on that grip. So use a, a softer grip, use a thicker grip, meaning that your hands don't have to tense up quite so much, and that might dissipate the injury or the illness that you have due to that grip being too thin. One of the biggest considerations for any golf with your grip is change them, change them fairly regularly. You know, some golfers will say, well, 10 years old, they've still got some life in them and you pick them up and they're all slippery and shiny and you have to feel like you really got to grab hold of them too tightly. Go and find a new golf club in the shop and just pick that up and go, oh, that feels good. Well, the bit you're feeling is the grip. So chances are you could re-grip your entire set of clubs for $100, $150, whatever, and suddenly they will feel like a new set of clubs. So rather than investing all the money in the shaft and the head, just change the grips first because that's going to be where the, the, uh, the improvement can be felt the, the quickest for the least amount of investment and money. So hopefully that's just given you some th things to think about in terms of updating your grips or considering the right grip for your golf game.